All right, this video will be about the effects of multiplying each observation in a distribution by a certain number. So last time we looked at what was the effect of adding a constant to all of the observations, all of the indiv individual salaries of teachers in a small school district. <clears throat> if I drag that new distribution and compare it to the old distribution, Here's what we have. So we see the exact same shape. We see the exact same variability. However, the center, wherever the center was, it did shift to the right. The quartiles shift to the right. So just the whole distribution shifts to the right. So anything involving position shifted, in this case, $5,000 to the right with that generous increase of five thousand dollars for every teacher. I will undo that. We'll talk about multiplying. So what would happen if the negotiators were able to negotiate a 10 percent raise? I mean look how hard teachers are having to work in this distance learning era. Hopefully this era is just for one school year and no more. All right so what we're going to do is multiply by 1.1, all salaries by 1.1. So just a little uh, review here that, uh, you know, 50,000 times 1, of course, is 50,000. But 50,000 times 1.1, that extra 0.1 is 10% extra, right? That's 1.1 over there. So 50,000 times the 1 makes the 50,000. 50,000 times the extra 0.1 or 10% is the 5,000. I have it broken down here. Okay, so a little distributed property going on there. All right, so that teacher making 50,000 would get a $5,000 raise. Would make no difference to them. Uh, which method, the adding method that we talked about, or the multiplying, because they're going to make 5,000. But if you were only making 40,000 a year, then you would only get a $4,000 raise. On the other hand, if you were making 80,000 a year, you would get an $8,000 raise. So now not everybody gets the same raise. So teachers on the upper end of the salary chart would prefer to get the 10% raise instead of the $5,000 uh, straight across the board raise. Okay, so in this spreadsheet over here, I multiplied all of the salaries, original salaries, by 10%. So let's compare the distributions and see what they, how they compare. Here's the original distribution of salaries. Now we're going to drag this over here. Okay, so the new one is at the bottom now. So you can see it. everybody went to the right. Everybody gained some salary. But did they all gain the same amount of salary? I think I've already answered that one. Uh, that one is no. If I would have exaggerated this and gone with a 50% raise, it would have been a little bit easier to see. But... Um, what happened is this data is more spread out for the new salaries than the old salaries because this person making the forty thousand uh, about about forty thousand here uh, something happened to the uh, I must have moved this out sal starting salaries but Anyways, this person, they only shift about $4,000. The person at the top, uh, they shift more to the right. So this is a little more stretched out. So if we were to compare measures of variability, they would not be the same. And we can make a little comparison over here. The original salary is compared to the 10% raise. So uh, the standard deviation... Uh, went from 10,761 to 11,837.50. Okay, so um, it is a little more spread out. And so actually, 
if you took ten thousand seven hundred sixty one and uh, forty cents dollars and forty cents on your calculator and you multiplied uh, by one point one do you think you would get this standard deviation uh, yes you would okay so uh, so we can see uh, some changes and variability okay so uh, now generally the shape did not change I know there's kind of some a weird scale going on here all right there we go that's better okay so we can see the the shape is the same it's just that it's more spread out after the 10 percent uh, raise so no change in shape now what about the center all right what happens to the center well the center which could be the mean or the median well what did the person making the median salary get they got a 10 percent uh, raise right um, so the center is going to shift okay so it's going to be whatever it was times 1.1 1 .1. uh, that's where it's going to be at now right the minimum got multiplied by 1.1 1 .1. the maximum got multiplied uh, by 1.1 1 .1. so here's a little summary of what's happening okay so the measures of center and location such as the mean median minimum maximum uh, values of the quartiles they all just get multiplied by b b in this case is 1.1 1 .1, what we are multiplying each observation by 1.1 1 .1 giving the 10 percent raise all right multiplying uh, measures or measures of variability are also multiplied by b or 1.1 1 .1 in this case because it's 10% more uh, spread out uh, than it used to be. Um, so then um, the shape does not change, right? So variability changes, it's more spread out, but it has that same shape. Okay, we can see how this region matches this region. Okay, we still got the kind of three peaks going on there. All right, and a little bit skewed here at the bottom so uh no, one last thing now we have a linear transformation going on okay so the linear transformation means that you know we have a, a multiplier we might be multiplying and we might be adding or or just one of those um but it's just a linear transformation so uh, so actually Let's switch this around and call this uh, B because we were multiplying by B, all right, and we were adding A, all right, then it matches. All right, so um, multiplying the effect of taking the variable X, which is the current teacher salary, okay, we looked in the last video how multiplying affects things. Or, sorry, we looked at how adding a constant adds things originally. This time, we looked at multiplying how that affects those things, right? Just like you learned about uh, slope, right, and y-intercept when you learned linear algebra and have probably come to understand that better. So y then would be the new uh, value. So you could figure out, like, uh, maybe they get a, uh, $1,000 raise that would be the A okay maybe they get a 2% increase so then B would be 1.02 maybe they get both of those things so you can then predict um, how things would change so if that was the case then you could take the old centers such as mean and then you would multiply by 1.02 and then you would also have to add the thousand and then that would be the new mean and you can do the same uh, with the other centers and uh, if this was variability adding the 1000 would not affect variability at all so on the next quiz be really careful if it's variability adding 
a constant to all the points does not affect how spread out it is, but multiplying does affect how spread out it is. Okay, so then in that case, you would multiply by 1.02, the old standard deviation, or the uh, other measures of spread, such as range or interquartile range. All right, so hopefully you're connected to all of those things. And if not, you should be asking me questions.